feels like it's been a hell of a long time since that game against Wolves. And it's been, let's be honest, uh, not the best uh, of a couple of weeks for Manchester United, for the fans, with everything that's going on with the players, with Ragnik. It's, it's been a horrible fallout from that 1-0 defeat against Wolves. And it's because that, that defeat against Wolves, it was coming, right? You look at the Norwich games and Newcastle performances overall, it was coming. And it was a horrendous game. So this match against Aston Villa in the FA Cup might on paper not be important for the course of the season. Yes, the FA Cup, you know, it, it would be good to win a domestic cup, but it's, it's not the measure of success for Manchester United. It never will be. But with everything that's going on with Ragnik, with everything that's going on with the players, there needs to be a response against Steven Gerrard. It has to be Steven Gerrard, doesn't it? Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa at Old Trafford. What I'm going to do in this video is run through my predicted 11, run through the team news from Ragnik, and my thoughts, because as you can see from the title of this video, I think this 11 is about who Ragnik can trust rather than simply who is his best 11. So if we go over to what Ralph has said ahead of the game, he said we will definitely will not play with eight or nine different players. We will try to play with the best team possible. So Ragnik has absolutely no intention of doing a young boys D2. Changing the whole team, giving a whole host of changes. But I think he'll make a couple of changes. I'll run through my team. Ahead of kickoff, though, I want to speak about this. Harry Maguire, Mr. Captain. I'll be honest, I'm I'm pretty done with uh, Harry Maguire as captain of Manchester United. I I think when it comes to uh, topics like this, I always try and stay a little bit more reserved. I think I've got a bit of a responsibility with this platform not to just literally jump on the negativity train and, and lead it and be the driver. I try and step back a little bit more and be a bit more measured. But I can't support him anymore, really. I kind of lost faith in Harry Maguire as captain after the Liverpool game, the 5-0, and in the interview after where he said, I'm here because I have to be here. And as soon as I heard him say that, I was like, oh, you're a fucking idiot, man. You don't have, have no idea. He has no idea what it takes to be captain of Manchester United. It's not an easy job, man. There's only a few people who have really done it to the level that we all, you know, the, your Keens, uh, your Vidiches, your Robson, Bruce. There's only a few ha that have done it in recent history that have done it very, very well, Manchester United. And Maguire is never going to be one. But going on to the team and speaking about Maguire saying the players are going to be here for a fight. We need to see a fight. Now, this is the team that played there against Wolves and it was an abysmal, abysmal performance, wasn't it? And if we're looking here, and as I said, I think the main topic of conversation here for Ralph Randick is who can he trust? We're talking about cliques in the dressing room. All the players are going to come out and deny it in the press now. But what we're seeing on the pitch, we are playing like a team divided rather than a team united. And if we're looking at who he can trust from that game against Wolves, there's only really three names that come out, really. Moran, Jones, and De Gea. They're the only people, let me go that, sorry, so you can see the full team. They're only the only players who really came out with any sort of credit. Phil Jones, man of the match easily against uh, Wolves. But Manchester United, almost to a man, were absolutely abysmal against Wolves. Now, in terms of changes, I think there will be a couple of changes here. I'm not saying that the Haya is going to get changed because the Haya is not reliable because he's been one of the most reliable players this season. Jeez, where will we be? We, we, we've reached that point this season, haven't we? Uh, where we have to say, where would we be if we didn't have Dean, if we didn't have the Haya in goal? But it's the FA Cup. So I do think he's going to give Dean Henderson a go. I personally think that Dean Henderson should be loaned out. I think Dean Henderson's clearly good enough to be playing first team football. He was linked with Ajax, so those rumours gone a bit dead. But I think Dean Henderson should be loaned out. We've clearly got a, an, enough backup in um, Heaton and the wallpaper guy, Lee Grant, or whoever he does at the club. Um, but Dean Henderson, I think, will start in goal here. In terms of the back four, I think there'll definitely be changes. I think we'll absolutely see Luke Shaw and wan Saka go to the bench. wan Saka has just, he's been so inconsistent. Not even inconsistent, he's just been crap this season. And I actually put him down, if you remember, going back to my predictions at the start of the season. I put wan Saka down as the most improved player. I thought having Jaden Sancho in front of him, a regular partner, would, it, would it allow him to excel and improve his attacking game. Instead, Sancho's not really started that often on the right-hand side. No one started that often on the right-hand side. Therefore, he's not had a reliable partner, but even, even saying that, wan has just been crap, hasn't he? There's no denying it. There's no saying anything else. But what we need, this, this is crucial, man. The, the first thing I suppose I should have talked about, let me get uh, wan Saka off the pitch. Later, mate. Um, the four triple two. I'm sticking to the four triple two here, and I absolutely want Ralph to stick to his four triple two. We've seen, I've seen him saying, "Oh, look, we can play three at the back. We can play four at the back. We can be flexible." Fuck that, Ralph. 
Don't pander to the players. Stick to this system. And people are saying, ah, oh, this system doesn't work, Manchester United, Sam. It does. Because these two players here, Sancho and whether it's Sancho and Greenwood or Bruno and Sancho, whoever it is, they have to operate as number 10s. They shouldn't be operating as the wide men. That's why it didn't work against Wolves, because they operated as wide men. And all of a sudden, we had a huge gap in that in there. What you need is for those two players to tuck inside. Whether it's Sancho or whether it's Bruno, whoever it's going to be. Look, I'll get to that later on in the video. It should be Tellez offering the whip. It should be the lot offering the lot, the low, the over. It should be the it should be our fullbacks offering the whip in this formation. Then the four triple two works. If you get our two number tens drifting wide to become wingers, this formation becomes extremely disconnected, and that's what happened against Wolves. But I think it'll be that. Would it be that back five? I mean, it's probably going to be Lindelof. Let's be completely honest. Lindelof is going to be fit to play, so I don't think Jones will start. Jones, all credit to him, but you know. I trust Jones. I don't trust Jones's body. I don't think Jones trusts his own body. I think it'll be Varane and Lindelof in the heart of defence. And I think it will be Dean Henderson in goal with Delot and Tellez as the fullbacks. Now you move on to midfield and there's more questions to ask. Who can you trust? Probably one main name on that list. And there's probably Scott McTominay really as far as uh, players starting in the Premier League goes. Because he's the only one now apart from De Gea, I think, that started every single Premier League game. Maybe Ronaldo as well. But I think it'll be Freddie McTominay in midfield. Now, McTominay, we all know what, how good McTominay can be. And we all know how bad McTominay can be. Games can pass him by. Um, and then he can be incredible. Was it the burning game where he got man of the match? And then he was absolutely abysmal against Wolves. It is what it is. Fact of the matter is, we said at the start of the season, man, every single midfield you look at with Manchester United, it's a compromise. It's a compromise. It's a compromise. It's, everything is a compromise. Even with Paul Popper in there, it's still a compromise. Matic in there, compromise. Fred and Matomane, compromise. Until we get better midfielders, our midfield will just be compromised. And it will constantly be, comp be a compromise, and it probably will be compromised as well. I think Fred will come back in here, and I think it'll be Fred and Matomane in midfield. I don't really know what else to say about our midfield. We know how bad it is compared to our biggest rivals and where our ambitions of where we want to be. We all know that Fred and Matomane are not going to win Manchester United of the Premier League, but it is what it is. It's what we've got at the moment. Could you start Donny van der Beek there? I mean, technically, he could probably start in there, but I don't think he will start there. Not sure Donny van der Beek, will he, will, he, will he start this game? I don't know. I don't have him in my 11 anyway. I've definitely got Bruno back in. And I'll tell you what, for, for, for Bruno is a player who so many people were happy that he wasn't playing against Wolves. Was it Wolves? No, sorry, it was Burnley. I can't remember what game he was banned for. Um, We miss... Bruno, when he's not in the team. It couldn't be Wolves because he came off the bench. And I know that we scored three against Burnley. I know that was was without Bruno. But the fact of the matter is, he is by far and away the biggest heartbeat that we've got in this team, in this attacking team. There are question marks about everybody in our attack right now. Everybody. In our whole team, really. There's not one player that I can put in that starting eleven with utter confidence, apart from David De Gea, and he's not even in this team because it's the FA Cup. So I'm giving it to Dean Henderson. I'm, I'm going to go for Bruno and Sancho there. I might be completely wrong. You could play Greenwood on the right there instead of Sancho. You could play Donny van der Beek if you wanted to. Back to the matter is with Donny, right? I've already done a separate video on this, but with Donny van der Beek, something must be going on on the training ground that isn't impressing Ragnik, that didn't impress Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I refuse to believe that they're both so ignorant that they're just holding an agenda against Donny van der Beek. That would be a strange coincidence. Uh, for that to happen under two managers. And I want Donny to play. I think that Donny has got that... He's a, he's a press-resistant footballer. He's somebody who's very gifted with the ball at his feet. He's somebody who can help Manchester United in terms of holding the ball and possessing the ball. But two managers have overlooked him now. Something must be up. It stinks. Something is wrong there. As I said, I think I would like him to leave in January for Manchester United to reinvest that money. But eh, when do United ever reinvest money? Let's be honest. Um, so we probably won't do that. Same way. When we sold Ronaldo, we signed, what was it, Obertan? Anyway, anyway, trying to be in a good mood here looking at the team. I'm going to stick with Ronaldo and Cavani up front. Now, you might say that's way too strong a team to play in the FA Cup. I would say every single game right now is a significant game for Ralph Randick and for these players. And I need to see a fucking response from these players. Harry Maguire, even if he was fit, he wouldn't go anywhere near this starting eleven, as far as I, I'm concerned. Harry Maguire talking about other players are going to come out fighting. Show me. 
Show me on the pitch. Show me against Aston Villa that you genuinely give a fuck. It's, it's not hard to get fans on your side. A little message to the Manchester United players. All you've got to do is put 110% in. No United fan will ever begrudge a United player that commits everything. If we, if we fall short, cool, we fall short. Maybe we'll fall short because, you know, our midfield is lacking in quality. Maybe we'll fall short because, you know, Jaden Sancho is still adapting. Maybe we'll fall short because, you know, Varane and Lindorf haven't played together that often this season. But you can, you, can, you can forgive those sorts of things. What you can't forgive as a fan is just watching a player, just the body language. It's like, oh, I don't want to be here. I want to be at home in my spa or in my... No, that's, just, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable at any club, let alone a club of Manchester United's size and stature. And that's the ultra, that, that's, that, that, that's the minimum. The minimum requirement, the fact that we're having these conversations is embarrassing. It really is. That's why we're still a laughing stock for other clubs. But that will be my starting 11. I'm going for the low intelligence of the fullbacks instead of Sean Wambasaka. They were abysmal against um, Wolves. And I think we need, the, we need the width. We need the width from our two fullbacks so Sancho and Bruno can tuck inside a little bit more. When they do that and they operate more as number 10s instead of wingers, you're going to see a far more connected part of the pitch there. If you don't, you're going to see Manchester United with huge spaces in this part of the pitch here. And that all depends on Bruno and Sancho tucking in a little bit instead of drifting out wide. Now, Bruno, he's the king drifter, isn't he? May as well be in Tokyo Drift. <clears throat> that was a crap joke. But that's what I want to see from Manchester United. I just want to see us giving a fuck. Please. It should be. You shouldn't have to ask these things. You really shouldn't. But from what we've seen, maybe you do. And Ralph Ragnick has got my utter support, man. He's a man who has experienced over decades in multiple clubs, in multiple countries, in multiple different roles, from manager to sporting to global communications director. He's a man who knows what he's talking about. He's a man who these players have to listen to. Because if they don't, and he moves up into a consultant, I said it, it's called a consultancy role, but I think it's going to be formalized into a director of football role. Randnick's here for a while and he's going to instigate change. And either these players buck up their ideas and get on board or they can, they can get fucked and they can leave in the summer. It's as simple as that. Who will be in your starting 11? You let me know in the comments below. That's my team. A strong team, yes, but every game is a cup final for United at the moment because of the way the, 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 the tide is turning. The narrative needs to be changed. The only way you do that in football is by winning. That has to come in our next two games in the FA Cup and the Premier League against Aston Villa. And that's the team I'll play in the FA Cup. Who would you start? You let me know in the comments below, as always. And if you are new to United People's TV and you're here still, thank you very much. And also, subscribe. Take it easy, though.